All right, welcome everybody. Let's draw. We have our piece of paper and we have our pen and that's all we need, right? Wrong. There's a few things you need to take into consideration when you choose your pen to go with your paper. First of all, it needs to be a pen you like and you feel comfortable with or maybe that you're excited about. But in this case, I want it to be also the luckiest pen, right? So with that in consideration, I'm going to put the paper aside. I'm going to put this pen here. I'm going to pull out, uh, where is it? Over here. My pen spinner. Spin to pen. And let me zoom out a little bit. Because I have some other pens here to, to put in a con, in, in the, into the contention, into, uh, consideration, into the running, right? We're going to have 12 pens total. And then we'll spin the pen spinner and find out which pen has luck on its side. And I think that's the pen that, um, you know, will really do best. That's the one I'll feel best about at that point. I think we can all agree. All right, so here we have, uh, um, you want me to go through them real quick? We have a Rotring Isograph, a technical pen. We have a nice Bic pen, a ballpoint pen. We have a dip pen here. Uh, this is a, an Opus 88 that I've modded to have a, a Pilot Parallel nib on there. Very flat and wide, okay. Um, over here we have a Sharpie. Nice Posca paint pen. A very uh, cheap but well-performing well Jin Hao. We have a, a vintage and very flexible uh, Waterman fountain pen. A, a, 0.3, a 0.2 millimeter a mechanical pencil thrown in there just for good measure. Uh, this one is a feud, Fude nib. I don't think I had to twist it. So that's a little bit different. And this is a this is a concrete pen. Well, it's really just a, a fountain pen, but it's, it's a little bit different. So I think we've got a pretty good variety here. Oh, this one is a, a Muji gel pen ballpoint also. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with the variety we've got here. And then um, I'll spin this and uh, we'll see what it lands on. All right. All right. I'm trying to spin it without knocking everything away away. Get lucky. I think I'm, I'm willing to draw with any of these, so. I guess that's this one. Is it directly pointing at these? At the, should I do a kind of a final spin between these two? I mean, it's, because it's not pointing directly at it. I think I will. I'm not trying to get out of drawing with that one because I've drawn with it before and I like it. All right, so I'm gonna put this one on this side and this one on this side and it's down to the final two, all right? We're gonna spin to pen with the pen spinner. and it's pointing straight up. One more time. And it's pointing straight down. Can it just point at one of them, please? And it's pointing straight up. We spin it really hard. There we go. Now that's a real spin. All right, this pen looks like, uh, this is a uh, Opus 88, which I modded by taking the nib from a, from a, like one of these Pilot Parallel pens. I think this is the 6.0 uh, millimeter. So um, basically, uh, let's do it up. I've done one video with this before and it easily deserves another video. I have no problem with that at all. Let's do it up, all right? Get my piece of paper back here, see what we can get into. 
So as you can see here, this is a very uh, wide, flat nib, and it makes this pen look a lot different than most of the other pens I have. Well, just the construction of the Opus 88 sets it apart on its own, but since I took the nib out, uh, previously this did have a fairly standard looking calligraphy, or like a fountain pen nib in it. I took that out, and then the the Pilot Parallel nibs, you know, if you take unscrew those, apparently the threading and... I don't even, actually, I don't know if it, there is threading or if it just, you know, puts, you know, snugs right in there, the exact same size. I'll probably twist it a little bit just to help it go in there, but it fits right back in there. I, I watched a YouTube video on it uh, some, that, that someone pointed out to me, so thank you uh, once again to the, the commenter who pointed that out to me a while ago. I think I probably went over this a little bit more in the previous video when I did this, but it, it, the nib reminds me of those those square the square shovels you can get for like scraping. I don't know what the really the what those shovels are intended for, but in my life I've used those shovels mostly for doing asphalt patches and road repairs. I had a summer job I had before. But anyways, in this drawing, I didn't use the big wide flat part of the nib very much. And maybe I should have. Actually, no. I'm pretty confident in saying there's nothing I should have done, which is what I like about art. There's nothing I should, I could have, okay? I could have, but I didn't. I did a, I did a couple places here and there. It would have been very good, uh, very useful um, for, you know, coloring in, uh, blocking in big sections, but I didn't have anywhere I really wanted to do that. The cool thing about this, these, you know, pilot parallel nibs, is that you can draw very well, very easily, very effectively by turning the nib on its edge and drawing with the corner of it. And then it really draws just like um, well, a lot of other pens at that point. And I don't know if they purposefully designed it that way or if it just kind of worked out that way, but I'm very happy with drawing with it that way. It works great. It's The only weird thing that's a little bit weird about it is sometimes when you're drawing, um, I'm used to having a nib that comes down to like a little point and I don't know if it's just a very little nitpicky thing when you're drawing with a nib that's like a big, wide, flat piece of metal like that. Sometimes I feel like I can't see like where I'm going, like what's in front of the nib. So I feel like I'm a little bit blind, like I've got like a blind spot. But that's okay. Everything worked out fine. Um, if I was going to compare the line width of drawing, uh, when, when I draw at the corner of the nib like this, uh, and compare that line width with another pen I use, it would probably be... The 0.35 Rotring Isograph, uh, maybe the 0.3, I don't know. I, at this point, I'm a little bit hesitant to say what my favorite pen is. Favorites in general, excuse me, I had to burp, uh, come a little bit reluctantly and slowly to me. I'm hesitant to say when I have favorites for some reason, but my preferred pen, my go-to pen at the moment is the Rotring Isograph for some reason, and... Uh, yeah, it seemed like the 0.35s is about the similar line width, and it draws just as well. For this, for this one, I was using. Let me let me grab the ink bottle so I can read it to you. The ink color in this one is Astorquiza rot, and uh, I, think I probably went over this as well before. Um, I think rot means red in German, right? And the brand is Robert Oster Signature Ink. And it seems like when I was just drawing with the nib, drawing lines, it looks really close to just being flat black ink, uh, or just barely not. But then when I would turn it on its side and draw the big, bold, flat, wide lines, you could really see that there was some uh, some red or some burgundy or something in there, right? Because it really is a little bit of that, which made it which made it look a little bit cool, I think. Almost like I was doing another... Um, two colored kind of two colored drawing like the last one I did, but I was just using one pen one ink I don't know what the difference was Also, you do have to be a little bit careful because I think when you draw draw on the corner like this I think it almost is like a little bit sharp When I was trying to color in some sections I was drawing on Bristol paper here kind of coloring it in the ink flows out of this nib very generously so it gets the paper soggy and it's easy to start tearing up the surface of the paper. Uh, so I had to be careful with that. I never felt like I was about to tear
tear through the paper because that's one thing I like about Bristol is it's very thick, very sturdy, can stand up to a lot of abuse. But uh, if anything, I had, a, I had more problems with bits of paper getting stuck in the nib. I think sometimes when you buy the, some of these nibs, they give, even give you like a little piece of paper, a little piece of like plastic that you can run between the tines and clear stuff out of it. But I actually did that once with just a, some other piece of plastic packaging that I had lying around. Very thin, very thin paper. I mean, plastic, just run it through there and it pulls stuff out of there, pulls gunk out of there. If you're having any flow problems or if you think there's any dried ink in there, just slide it right through. You might even be able to do that with a piece of paper, but I, I'd be hesitant to do it with paper lest the paper gets soggy and gets stuck in there more. Plastic seems to work well. You might, you might even be able to use like part of a chip bag or something if it's very clean. There's something that thin, you know, but yes. So once again, this is just like a loose doodle where I didn't plan it out at all. And I broke my cardinal rule here, which was to let them nest indoors. Now my cardinal rule for, I mean, it's not like a rule rule, but I usually try not to rotate my paper too much when I'm recording these videos, uh, because I know that once I speed up the videos, uh, it can get kind of dizzy with it all spinning around. I rotate this paper quite a bit, mostly because I know that sometimes these um, fountain pen inks, they get, uh, even after it seems like they dry, if you put your hand on them, it seems like uh, they, they still get a bit smudgy. So I was trying to work around it, try not to put my hand on top of the part of the drawing that had already been completed. I still smudged it quite a bit. Very subtle smudging, very tasteful, subtle smudging. And, uh, so it was all right. So I hope you don't, you know, you didn't get too dizzy or motion sickness with the spinning that did go on. But I, I really do realize that I have kind of trained myself out of turning the paper when it probably is good to turn the paper in a lot of situations. Uh, it's just to, uh, so you can accommodate the natural motion of your hand. And because my the natural motion of my hand has me drawing lines in a certain direction a lot of the times. And when you rotate the paper, you escape that, that accumulation of lines all going in the same direction. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but don't be afraid to turn your paper. I don't turn my paper just because I'm recording, but a lot of you aren't recording, and so turn the paper. It's fine. All right. Um, all right. See y'all later. Maybe we can spin the uh, the pen spinner again sometime. Let me know what you think of that. All right. All right. See you later. All right. Goodbye.